Hey everyone, welcome to this tutorial. Uh, this time we're going to talk about how to create this advanced shockwave that you guys might have seen me post in the last couple posts on the channel. Um, so we're going to kind of talk about this and how I use some of the elements that I just released as a library to kind of kitbash this sort of thing together. Um, so this is the effect. I'll just let it play in case you guys haven't seen. Um, we have this ball kind of dropping down and in, and then we have like this huge kind of shockwave explosion, uh, explosion, and sort of this refractive uh, thing happening. And there's sort of a couple levels of complexity to this explosion. It's not simply like a 2D element. Uh, that's not going to work. Um, so just to point out some of the levels of complexity in this, if I pause on maybe one of the explosion frames here, uh, we can see that... Uh, first of all, we have uh, obviously this very bright overexposed uh, center here where we're losing detail. And uh, this is an important part of, I guess, compositing is like losing detail is really important and knowing where to maintain or lose it uh, as part of a, the photographic quality of something is uh, something you want to consider. Um, so that's kind of something we have happening in center, but we also have a couple of different variations of color happening. Um, and then we also have this like huge explosion with uh, sort of these like manifolds of, uh, I guess, like additive uh, sort of overlapping ripples uh, that give it this sort of quality. So it's not uh, as straightforward as just, you know, using an eye distort and kind of, uh, you know, putting it over the scene. So I'm going to talk about how I did this and how I use the elements and also why I call it kit bashing. So, uh, it, it really is a lot of the elements combined, uh, but you'll see how I'm working with them. And I think that this is probably something that's um, maybe not understood directly when you're looking at the uh, uh, energy effects library that I release is it's not meant to just be something uh, you take and you just slap it over your, your footage and you're done. Uh, really, there's a certain way you can actually work with these. And I think it's actually sort of a new way of working. Um, I also think it's sort of combining an old way of working, uh, like kind of the lost art of uh, some of the people, you know, like in After Effects, the way they composite and they use patterns uh, is something that I think is almost kind of a lost art. Uh, you see some people doing it, but not that many people are doing it. So, yeah, I think that having this library is really useful. And um, if you want that, by the way, you can get it here. Uh, so it's on the website, Composite Academy slash Energy Effects uh, FX in the domain. And then you can see uh, basically 200 simulated effects for uh, look development. Um, so I'll put this back and we'll look uh, at this next. There's a video I'll show you guys next of um, how I actually use some of these elements to generate some of the lens flares and the lens artifacts. So these these elements, even though it's called the energy kind of effects library, um, really it's just a bunch of patterns and you can do anything that you can do with a pattern. Um, so that's like part of uh, a big part of all of these lens flares and that sort of refractive quality is also coming from those uh, elements. So I'm going to talk about the main part here first, which is uh, this. Uh, let me just zoom here to my shockwave. So this is the main uh, shockwave event. So we have this pass that I created. Uh, we have all of that kind of glassy refraction happening in there. And it's kind of scaling, scaling up and going across our scene. Uh, and then we also have the second part. So there's kind of a two parts to the main shockwave. Uh, there's like this bubble that kind of comes, uh, but we also have uh, where the bubble is contacting the geometry. So I created kind of like an electrical pass that is utilizing uh, another element, uh, but it, we're revealing it across the geometry where the shockwave is touching. And if you look at the final comp, um, Go back to the final comp. You can see it gives it that quality of it feels like something is truly kind of traveling along the surface. Um, so even though it's split into two elements, it looks like one whole event that's happening together. And so let me just go back to that. So I guess I'll explain the contact point first just because I'm already at this part of the script. So essentially what this is is uh, we have this element from the pack uh, from the library and you can notice that it's actually a circle um, and that's not going to work for our situation. But one thing with this library is that 
they're 4K, so you can basically bend them, you can warp them, and you're gonna maintain a certain level of sharpness and you can kind of rewrap them onto geometries in different ways. So in this case, uh, we have a circular kind of portal which could be used for a multitude of things, but uh, in this case, I unwrapped it into uh, a straight kind of linear pattern. So we have a node here called Polar Distort. This is from Nukipedia. You can do the same thing with a spherical transform node. Uh, I just don't like messing around with all the settings here. There's a bunch of stuff you have to memorize and I'm a little bit lazy with that. So I just keep the Polar Distort, chuck it on whenever I need to unwrap or rewrap. So what that does is you can wrap circles into uh, uh, basically straight lines. And that allows us to take the circular pattern, uh, put it into a linear pattern. And what we can do with that is ST map it to our scene. So again, the ST map, I've covered this many times in some other videos, you can go check them out uh, with UV passes, but basically we have a UV pass for this environment. And we're wrapping this new uh, effect. And as it kind of spreads, if I just like kind of play upward, um, this thing will kind of expand across uh, our scene. So we have the pattern ST map to it, uh, which is gonna give us something uh, kind of everywhere in the geometry. So if I just look at the, if I just look at that and give it a second to load here, uh, we can see that that's kind of wrapped uh, on the whole scene, but we only want this texture to appear where the shockwave is touching. So the way I did that was I essentially just used uh, P mats. So I used the uh, P mask node, again from Nukipedia, you can grab it, I'll just type it in. Uh, there's other ones as well, I just use this one. Um, they all do the same thing basically, but uh, yeah, so basically I expand this mat at the same time as the shockwave. So we have this black and white alpha that is gonna reveal our uh, quote unquote kind of contacting energy effect. So this effect is only going to appear uh, on the edges uh, and that will just give us that like kind of leading edge of the effect that's spreading. So that's basically how that was done. I know that's a quick overview and I'm not covering every single node but this is a more advanced uh, I guess tutorial. So I'm not gonna cover every single node because the videos will just end up being way too long. I'd rather uh, cover the concepts. And if people have a specific question, I can maybe try to answer it. But um, I think covering the concepts and, and the way to think about approaching a visual effect is actually maybe more useful than just like a specific node. Um, and one other thing I can, I guess, mention here just to point it out is I did use some crypto mats uh, to isolate uh, certain areas and kind of mix in texture a little bit differently. Uh, and that's because if you just slap on this whole effect uh, with an ST map, um, the way the UVs are mapped on different pieces of the scene, you know, you might have a little bit of texture that's stretched too far or too big. So what you can do is sort of ST map it uh, differently. So you kind of scale this thing up and down uh, and then just kind of key mix that between different pieces of the geometry of the scene, if that makes sense. So essentially we're just taking mats of different pieces and scaling that effect for each piece so that uh, it doesn't look stretched and stuff like that. Um, so that's kind of a, a very quick and uh, uh, simplified version of, I guess, the explanation of that, but hopefully that uh, makes sense. Uh, so you can see how that uh, circular element became something totally different. And that's something I'm really trying to demonstrate uh, with this video. And you'll see again with this uh, main shockwave, basically the same thing. So it's like a, uh, an effect, but it looks totally different than the original effect. So I'll show you guys that now. Uh, so I'll go up here. Uh, one way I like to work with these elements that I've discovered after creating them is I just like to load them all in Nuke at the same time. So basically I chuck them all on like an external drive uh, so I don't fill my computer with some memory. Just throw them on an external drive and I can just step through and I just load them all into Nuke at the same time. And I can just find a pattern that suits what I'm doing. Um, so I wanted to make a shockwave, so I found this pattern uh, and I thought this one was pretty cool. Um, but this isn't gonna work to just scale it up in 2D towards the camera. It's not gonna really give us that, that look. And that's actually what I tried originally. I'm like, oh, maybe I could just stick it on there and kind of scale it. So usually I try to go for the very, very quick solution first, um, but that's just not gonna work because we need that uh, three-dimensional quality. So the way I used this element uh, was to, so I did some grading here. Let's just see, uh, go back in time here. So at the right frame, 
So like this, uh, I used this, uh, another element here, this kind of liquid one you saw me use probably in the last tutorial uh, I did. I really like this one. It just has a lot of uh, depth and layer and you can do all kinds of stuff with it. So um, I use that as a basically eye distort to the other effect. So we have this main effect being distorted by this uh, other liquid effect. I'm using a node called glass. Again, another one from Nukipedia. You can just type it in. It's the same thing as an eye distort, but the, the nice thing about this node is you can eye distort uh, the color channels slightly differently. And what that does is it gives us this nice aberration in some of the highlights and gives it that really refractive quality. So we get something that looks like this. Uh, but again, we're still working with a 2D sphere here. So now we need to solve how can we make something 2D have multiple layers of depth um, and have a nicer quality. So essentially what I did was I took a sphere and we have a sphere here and I did a uh, apply material. And the reason I use the apply material because we don't want to apply the texture right away because we actually need to change the UVs um, of the uh, effect that we're trying to apply. So what I mean by that is if I disable this, uh, I guess I could have maybe applied it as a, as a texture directly. Let's just see. So yeah, let's see that versus, yeah, I probably could have uh, applied it directly as an image. Let's just see UV project. Yeah, it looks like it does the same thing. So maybe the applied material is not necessary here, but uh, in any case, um, essentially what I did was I took the sphere, I used a UV project. And what is this doing? Uh, we have the normal UVs of a sphere. So if you look at the, the way the sphere normally uh, maps the UVs. Uh, if we apply like a checkerboard and we look at that, uh, we see it's just kind of wrapping around. But actually what I wanted to do is kind of project, um, let's just uh, switch back to the effect quick. It'll be easier to demonstrate. What I wanted to do was kind of uh, project this effect on both sides. So instead of having it just on one side wrapping around the whole thing, which you kind of lose the texture almost. Like I wanted to make it look like a multi-layered uh, effect sort of. So by using a UV project, you're basically doing, uh, you're changing the way the UVs are mapped. And uh, you can check out the video on UVs I have. I think I have uh, a pretty good description of like what are UVs and everything like that. But um, I used a, a planar projection uh, on the YZ plane from an axis. So what is that doing? Um, when I move this axis around, uh, essentially, let's just move it up and down so we can see. So essentially it's doing this. It's kind of projecting that texture uh, on this plane uh, onto this surface. So we get this double sort of effect here. And after that, I just took a transform geo and merged it over itself. So I rotated it 90 degrees and uh, merge this thing over itself. So we get this effect of like uh, four different, um, I guess, patterns here. And we could time offset them if you wanna make them slightly asymmetrical or something like that. Um, in this case, there's so much motion blur and everything like that, that I didn't really uh, bother. But this is like the base of the effect. And then what I did was a displaced geo. So I did a displaced geo with a radial and uh, I put the radial at the center of this uh, sort of format. And then I use the displaced geo. And what is this doing? Uh, basically, I animated this displaced geo to uh, have a smaller scale towards the start of the scene. So if I go a little bit backwards in time, you'll see that our sphere starts to bend inward towards the center. Uh, and I wanted it to feel like an explosion coming from a center point. So rather than just having a sphere scaling up, uh, I did a sphere that uh, displaces from the center uh, outward. So basically everything is like curving in at the start like this, and it's just displacing from a radial. And then I just animate that scale off of the displacement. So we can see it like kind of goes more circular as it uh, travels further away. So you see the bend is becoming less as it gets bigger. So if I just skip forward again in time, um, that displacement reduces over time. So we have like a perfect sphere. And what does that give you? It gives you something that basically looks like this. Uh, so we have that kind of weird shape at the start that kind of have these nice like triangle, like almost uh, explosive look. And then it's kind of moving outward and then becoming more spherical as it uh, expands. And we also have that nice kind of glassy effect.
Uh, I did use some deep compositing here. Uh, I'm not going to cover a full tutorial of deep compositing yet because I haven't completely dived into those concepts and that is a pretty deep concept in itself. So um, that's not what this video is about, but essentially what it is is just taking a scanline render, uh, taking the geometry of the scene and doing a deep merge. And that uh, basically allows you to uh, cut out the shockwave from the geometry that it's passing across. So it's basically just a deep merge. Uh, I think I used the deep reformat as well to make it faster. Um, I think it was pretty slow, but again, I don't want to get too much in deep on this tutorial because that's a really, really long topic. I just want to kind of cover the look dev of this shockwave. Um, so yeah, now we have this nice base of this exploding thing. And let's go back to the script and see. So shockwave, and then I did some color grading on it to make it a little bit more blue because um, that goes with the color scheme of our scene. I'm gonna talk about a little bit more of the color scheme in a few minutes once I get to that, but uh, yeah. And then just merging this over. Um, also, I used it as a map for distortion as well. So like we, we have the scene without it, we have the scene with it, but also I'm using the same effect as another distortion map. So that kind of distorts the background below it like this and then merging the effect over the top. So now we have all those like layered highlights and that kind of complexity I was talking about, as well as, uh, you know, as it's crossing, we have that, uh, all this stuff happening. Um, so let's keep going um, down the script. I'll start talking about, I guess, the lens flares now. Um, I'm not gonna cover every lens flare. I'll just cover kind of the ones I use the, uh, elements in here. So let's just go down. Uh, one other part was, I just forgot to mention this. Um, so part of that shockwave, I created another render pass, not a render, but I did this in Nuke. I just took um, an element and I wrapped it on that same sphere that I created with all that distortion and everything happening, but I put a refractive element on it. So let me go up and just explain that real quick before I move on to the lens flare portion. Um, if I can find it, uh, don't have it properly labeled here and it's been a couple days, here we go. So uh, here it is. So this is the element I used on there instead. So I this is the same sphere setup I just showed you guys, but instead of putting that other material on, I took this element from the library because I thought that it had kind of a glass-like quality to it in the way that things overlap with each other. And I'm gonna show you guys uh, a video of a real flare and kind of refractive element in a second here of some footage I took with a drone uh, just to explain that further. But uh, I wanna go over this real quickly anyway. So we have the color space uh, into HSV and I'm doing this sort of trick to like make it a rainbow. Uh, I have a tutorial on my channel about how to make a rainbow in Nuke so you can find that. So I'm not gonna explain this whole concept because that's a video in itself. But essentially we can take a black and white image and we can make, basically make it a rainbow. Uh, and then what I did was I took some of the uh, greens out because I don't want those those colors, uh, that very hunter, like uh, woods green. I didn't want that in my scene. So I'm gonna show you guys the color scheme I was working for. But So I just took a little bit of that out. So we have this crazy looking element uh, that we can essentially uh, distort. So I used the same trick there and then I just applied that to my sphere. And then we basically get an element that looks like this. And this is something we can just mix in a little bit to give more of a glassy kind of quality. And you see it gets a little bit low res when it's really, really close to the camera, but it really doesn't matter because the amount of motion blur that's happening here, uh, we can also blur it a little bit more as it comes and fade it off. So uh, this is gonna be a really great pass to have as a compositor. So yeah, I'm kind of like creating each layer, each pass, but uh, just in Nuke, you know, we don't need to create everything in CG. So I'll just go down here and start talking about some of these other parts. Let's go to a good frame uh, to demonstrate it. So let's see. So I think this is a good frame. Um, so one of the things I wanna mention before I talk about the flare aspect is, is the color scheme, because this is important. It's always seems to be overlooked in tutorials and stuff like that. You never, you never hear compositors talking about the art side of compositing, you always hear about you know, just CG passes and stuff like that, but that's actually not the most important part. Um, so one of the things when you're working on this is not to just start chucking random colors, 
uh, in a scene. You want to come up with a color scheme and try to work within the, those um, mental barriers, those artistic barriers. Uh, so one of the uh, kind of color schemes I worked in here is, I mean, you can see it pretty much at the start of the shot. So we go here and we have this pretty monochromatic sort of scene, like just basically blue and uh, kind of teals and then the highlights go a bit desaturated. Um, so if we were to like draw that out as a color scheme just to uh, visualize it, um, and it does help to do this, let's just draw it out. So we have something like that. Uh, we have something a little bit more in the teals, kind of teal greens, like that. And then we have some desaturated highlights. Maybe make it a little bit brighter for demonstration. Desaturated highlights. So this is our main color scheme, sort of. Um, but what I wanted to do was, rather than have it completely monochromatic, was to chuck in some, uh, just some cooler tones, but not completely breaking the image. If I go in the really reds and orange and green, everything's going to look rainbow and it starts to look a bit cheap. Like you have to do that uh, very carefully if you're going to use a lot of colors. And if you look at Marvel films, um, you know, like you look at Doctor Strange and some of these, these films, they do this quite brilliantly in terms of the way that they're um, managing these colors. And some of their frames look very um, stylized because the the amount of saturation they're using, uh, but it still is very static in the way that they're doing it because they're very cautious in the way that they're they're choosing their colors. Um, so for this, what I wanted to do was chuck some of these co these cooler tones in. So I took a little bit of this kind of purplish color and a little bit of this kind of slightly more green um, sort of color in the in the flare. So we're gonna see this uh, pretty much in the picture. I did use a tiny bit of yellow yellow green uh, on some of the flares at, at one point, but um, yeah, it's really not as prominent uh, as everything else. It's very a uh, very subtle addition. But that just gives it a little bit of color variation. So you start to see that in our highlights, uh, in our uh, explosion flare, uh, and all of these little elements here. So it just adds pops of color uh, to your scene. So let me talk about how these flares were actually made, not just the color. Um, I'll go back up to it. So let me just go back earlier in my comp and give it a second to load. Um, Let's go to frame 50, yeah, frame 51 actually, I think it's fine. Just let it load for a second. I don't have the whole thing completely pre-comped out. Um, I do have a lot of pre-comps in this comp. This is a pretty big script as you can see. Um, let's go here, go a bit further down in our comp. There we go. So let's look at just one of these elements here. Uh, yeah, I have some of these elements, these explosion stuff coming towards the camera as well. I'm not going to talk about every single element I use, but I did use a lot of those energy effects layered together. Uh, and that's the nice thing about having them already rendered. It's like you wouldn't necessarily think if you're doing the simulations yourself, um, you'd have to make every single effect from scratch. But having all that huge library at your disposal, it speeds up this process. So these are some of the elements I created for lens flares. So this is uh, an element from my energy pack that uh, it's supposed to be probably, I don't know, maybe some kind of wormhole or like EMP or some kind of crazy explosion. So you can use it for all kinds of stuff. But when I was looking at this, you know, I just dropped them all in nuke. And I was like, well, this kind of looks like uh, a refractive type of quality. And what I mean by that is, uh, let me show you a video. So this is a video uh, that I took. Uh, and I have some really nice lens flares in this video. So there's like basically no post-production in here except some very slight grading on DaVinci Resolve. Um, but I like to keep these videos and I have like basically a library of pictures and videos that I uh, mentally store uh, because there's all kinds of details that you want to remember. So something like this, you see this flare for me down on this car with all these tiny little uh, rainbow streaks. And this is like a crazy flare. Uh, it doesn't happen that often, but you know, it's something that you're not going to maybe intuitively think of. So it's nice to have uh, those things. So you can see that little flare forming there, but that's not the one I wanted to point out. There's a couple of flares in this video that are very interesting um, and, and kind of demonstrate this sort of uh, idea. So you can see uh, here on the bottom of the frame, we have this uh, flare coming in and it looks like some shapes that are kind of almost overlapping in the way they move. And this is something you see a lot in um, sort of 
lens flares. You see these like little overlapping highlights. Uh, so we'll go here. Uh, again, another one forms here. So we can see these little almost, I don't know, slight brighter pieces in a, in a larger glass-like flare. And uh, as it keeps going, there's a couple more that, that show this um, bit well as here. So we can see it again here. So we see that uh, little pieces that are changing highlights at different rates uh, from each other and kind of overlapping, which makes this really nice organic looking motion. Uh, again, with this one, so we see this kind of weird shape that appears at the end. And if we look at my comp, I always try to take those things into consideration uh, to try to mimic those effects. So you can see this, this kind of flare thing happening. We have something similar happening here. Um, and those kind of refractive elements are happening in the edge flare. Uh, so let's go back to it. So yeah, this, this library uh, can be used for a lot of things. And uh, I use it in this case for an edge flare. So I took this element, I scaled it up to the edge of the frame. And then I kind of like frame holded it on different frames and dissolved between. So like as I switch frames, as I tap through here, you see that these uh, highlights are kind of changing in within the shape of another shape. So it gives that sort of look that I just described. Uh, and what we can do with that is kind of uh, push it into our color scheme that I mentioned. So if I go into that color scheme, uh, we have those blues and uh, those nice uh, highlights there as well. So we can kind of plus that on as the explosion is happening. Um, so let's just load it here. Go back to frame 51. I think it's already cached. So obviously it looks kind of weird. Everything looks weird on this frame because there's not enough uh, elements here. So everything looks just like a very ugly glow in the center. But if we, again, if we step down the comp, once we have all the other stuff, that's where it comes together. So it's a lot of layers. Um, but you can see that just even that base layer uh, that little refractive element, it adds that, uh, that edge here. I also used another one of my uh, effects from that library. So if I time pin it and I look at it, so this is another element that's, that comes with that library. It does something like this, where there's like these like two spheres that like protrude outward. Um, and that can be used for like a bunch of different stuff. But in this case, I actually looked at the start frame and I said, well, that actually looks kind of interesting. It doesn't, uh, you know, even though this is like some kind of energy ball explosion, the start frame looks like an optical element. So actually I just frame holded it on that frame and scaled it up like crazy. And then what I did was add some color to it. So I, I basically went in the, the blues, the same kind of tones were in here. Uh, and then I added a, sl a slight bit of uh, purple into the highlights. So I kind of blurred it. So it's like all blurred together. And then I add a, a slight bit of color uh, into that image. And that's again, just giving a slight pop of color is going to add interest to your image rather than just, you know, going completely monochromatic. So you see, even though we have a blue explosion, I'm adding pink uh, highlights. Um, and as I step down, uh, all these same concepts are being applied. So as I step down, we have more uh, different color highlights. So again, I use this element as a lens flare as well. So if you remember, this is the same element I wrapped onto the, um, I guess the shockwave as a refractive thing, but I also use it as a lens flare. So you can see it, it's used in different ways. And um, yeah, basically just did the rainbow technique, uh, which is explained in the video, uh, how to make rainbow nuke. And then I'm just kind of scaling that up uh, and adjusting the point in time uh, of that video to make it kind of flicker. So same thing here. So we have that same element uh, just at a different point in time and I'm mixing them on and off at different points. And let's see. And then this one, I think this is just uh, an optical flare. So this is from the optical flares plugin. So that's how we can get a more complex looking flare uh, using a kit bashing. And um, let's just keep going down. I think, yeah, this is an interesting one as well. Let me go to frame 51, this is cached. Uh, this is another interesting one. So again, like we've constructed it to here at this point and we can add layers of color just to make it more interesting. So I took this shockwave element and motion blurred outward, just a 2D motion blur, very simple. Uh, and then just 
bit add a bit of that uh, greenish tone in there and we can just add those little those uh, stacking those pops of color as we build this image up um, let's just see and yeah there's a bunch of other stuff but uh, I think that's basically it for the shockwave. I know a lot of people had a question on how to do that, and I think this tutorial will be very useful in seeing that. Um, obviously, if you guys don't want to get the you know the, the library for for whatever reason, um, a lot of these techniques still apply, and it, you can see like the the sort of logic, the way of combining patterns and stacking things and uh, combining colors to get a result, and that's I think pretty useful. So hopefully. You guys have enjoyed. Uh, hit like if you liked the video. It really helps the algorithm. And uh, yeah, thanks so much.